Well, a powerful storm has made landfall in the Philippines. Typhoon Camry is whipping up the waves and bringing torrential rains, winds topping 150 kilometers per hour. It is now heading towards the capital, Manila. This typhoon has knocked out power in a number of provinces. More than 200,000 people have been forced to flee to safety. Manila's International Airport has suspended its operations, and organizers of the Southeast Asian Games have had to cancel events there. At least 26 persons in Burundi are reported killed after heavy rains in Sibitoke province in the west of the country. The security ministry said on Thursday dozens are injured and at least 10 persons were missing. Homes were destroyed and buried by landslides following the heavy rains in the area. Security ministry spokesperson Pierre Inkurikie says rescue operations are ongoing. An official is quoted as telling journalists they are still digging up dead bodies. It took firefighters three hours to extinguish the blaze. But by then, the damage was already irreversible. I don't know how those poor people were living in that building. The government and the administration should investigate this problem. They only decide to look into similar problems when it's too late. Witnesses say the fire took hold so quickly in the early hours that those sleeping inside the factory, all laborers, had little time to escape. The youngest victim is believed to be 13 years old. There were factories for purses, wallets and some plastic bags here. That's where the fire began. Most of the victims suffocated because the place was really small and they didn't have enough time to get out. The factory was located in an area close to a popular market in New Delhi. Police say the building had violated multiple safety regulations and are investigating if the factory was operating illegally. Devastating fires like these are quite common in India's bigger cities, but safety norms are often flouted by builders and occupants across the country. These are scenes we're unlikely to see again anytime soon as the World Anti-Doping Agency has banned Russia for four years from global sport. It means there'll be no Russian team at the Olympics or Football World Cup, no Russian national anthem or Russian flag. The country is also forbidden from hosting or bidding for major events. This represents the most severe sanction yet for a doping scandal which shocked the world. At the height of the deception, Russia's cheating was worthy of a Hollywood script. Dirty urine samples were passed through a hole in the wall and swapped for clean ones at the Sochi Winter Olympics in 2014. The missing plane is a 40-year-old Chilean Air Force C-130, believed to have gone down in the icy waters between South America and Antarctica. Commanders say the plane left Punta Arenas, Chile, just before 5 p.m. Monday, headed for a base on Antarctica, when it disappeared over a violent stretch of ocean called the Drake Passage, losing radio contact at 6.13 p.m., about halfway through the trip. He says we are using all resources available, humans, planes, ships, national satellites. On board, 38 civilians and military personnel headed for an oil platform. Many of their relatives waiting for word in the capital of Santiago as international search teams fear the plane may never be located. Finland's parliament has voted to make 34-year-old Social Democrat Sanna Marin the world's youngest serving prime minister. She will lead a five-party coalition cabinet consisting of 12 female and seven male ministers. Marine will struggle to defend her leftist views against the center party, which says it wants action to boost Finnish employment to pay for the costly welfare state. Finland's government resigned last week after the center party said it had lost confidence in Social Democrat Prime Minister Antti Rene over his handling of a postal strike. Surrounded by friends and family, Mohammed Akhtagadet describes his near-death experience when ISIL fighters attacked the town of Inaches last week, for the third time this year. They'd returned to Inaches a few months ago, hoping to rebuild their lives, but were again forced to return to this camp in Nairu, around 50 kilometers from Inaches. The trade organization is facing its biggest crisis since it was founded a quarter century ago. Director General Roberto Azovedo had hoped to resolve the impasse, but instead the organization can no longer deliver rulings on trade disputes because Washington has blocked the appointment of new judges to its appellate panel. 
The panel is made up of seven judges. Four whose terms have expired have not been replaced because the United States has blocked the naming of their replacements. Two of the remaining three are due to leave on Wednesday. With only one member remaining, the court will no longer be able to issue rulings. As a result, there will no longer be an independent body to intervene in trade conflicts. The stronger side will probably prevail. Roberto Azevedo wants to turn the crisis into an opportunity. On Tuesday, he insisted the WTO had to be reformed. Respondent in Rome, Sima Gupta. Sima, how historic is this decision from Pope Francis to change these Vatican secrecy laws? Well, it's it's quite a massive change. I mean, Pope Francis, by the way, also turns 83 today, and he's given a present to those that have been fighting the issue of child sexual abuse in the Catholic Church with this move. It's opened the door, really, to greater cooperation between the Vatican and the civil authorities that are investigating these cases of child sexual abuse. They are no longer protected by this pontifical secrecy. Now, to give you an idea, uh, Mary Collins, now she's a prominent uh, Irish abuse survivor. She uh, said this move, she called it excellent news, tweeting that at last a real and positive change. Uh, the Vatican editorial director, Andrea Tornelli, referring to this in a statement that was released, saying that it was an historical move, a sign of openness and transparency. And really, it's the first real concrete step that we're seeing since that landmark uh, conference that was held at the Vatican back in February, in which the Pope invited invited the bishops from all around the world to discuss this particular issue. Now the UN-recognized government in Tripoli is under attack. <laughs> Warlord Khalifa Haftar has called for a decisive battle nearly eight months after his offensive began. Last week, his forces shot down a Turkish drone and captured an important camp for militias allied to the government of National Accord south of the city. Now Turkey has offered to step up its support to the Tripoli government. President Erdogan recently signed maritime and military deals and says he's ready to send troops to Libya if requested. The worst locust crisis in decades is ravaging East Africa, threatening the food supply for millions of people. Kenya, Somalia and Ethiopia are at the center of this latest outbreak. You can see in this video just how massive the locust swarms have been across the region. These bugs have infested farmland and destroyed crops. Farmers are calling on the international community to help prevent a food crisis. This is a truly historic day for the American Armed Forces. In just a few minutes, I will proudly sign into law the largest ever investment in the United States military. In fact, I can say the largest ever by far. Today also marks another landmark achievement as we officially inaugurate the newest branch of our military. This is a very big and important moment. It's called the Space Force. I'm extremely happy that also this highest court in the Netherlands has confirmed that climate change is a real severe problem and that governments should do what they self have declared for more than 10 years is necessary. He was going to collect documents for his forthcoming marriage, but Jamal Khashoggi never came out of the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. As his fiancée waited outside, behind the closed doors, he was being murdered and dismembered. Today, after a trial condemned as a sham by the international community, 
Saudi Arabia said five men have been sentenced to death for his killing. But those closest to the kingdom's crown prince were cleared. A CIA investigation had earlier claimed the men were acting on the orders of Prince Mohammed bin Salman, something he has always denied. Search efforts are underway in Indonesia's South Sumatra province for the survivors of a deadly overnight bus accident. At least 25 are dead and 14 others injured in the disaster. Now the bus was travelling to the town of Pagar Alam when local police say that the brakes malfunctioned. It then crashed into a concrete road barrier before plunging 150 metres into a ravine, ending up in a river. Officers and rescuers are scouring the river and nearby slopes for passengers, but the steep terrain is hampering efforts. It's believed the bus was overloaded. The passenger manifest indicated it left with 27 people on board, but several survivors say there were roughly 50 people inside. <laughs> Chinese health authorities are still working to identify the virus behind a pneumonia outbreak in the central city of Wuhan. According to authorities, the number of cases has increased to 44, with 11 of them in serious condition. Hong Kong reported two more cases linked to Wuhan flu, bringing the city's total cases to five. 121 people are under medical observation in Wuhan. Rumours on social media alleged that the outbreak in Wuhan could be linked to SARS. Authorities say it is untrue and eight people were detained for spreading fake news online. Less of a glow over in China, where a state-owned enterprise in the northern region of Inner Mongolia defaulted on part of a $142 million privately issued bond over the weekend. It's the latest in a string of corporate delinquencies raising concerns about contagion risk as the economy slows. Hot Hot Economic and Technological Development Zone Investment Development Group says it will repay the money after the 6 December deadline. The company is involved in businesses ranging from real estate to water systems development and infrastructure. Chinese local governments had a funding gap of over $1 trillion last year. The stress is likely to increase as China cuts taxes and boosts fiscal spending to boost an economy hit by the Sino-US trade war. A stain in the sky as a vehicle bomb ripped into the morning rush hour. Most of the victims thought to be students returning to class. Police officers too among the dead in Somalia's capital city. The explosion was very large. Many people died here. I saw many dead bodies lying on the ground. The vehicle, laden with explosives, struck a busy checkpoint. It caused maximum damage, leaving a trail of twisted destruction. Strewn belongings, evidence of the horror. Emergency services rushed to help survivors, children among the wounded. A truck loaded with explosives was detonated at a busy control checkpoint. The explosion led to many deaths and injuries. The deaths are not yet clear, but the number is high. Many of those who died here were students who were going to schools and universities. To Afghanistan now, where Taliban leadership has reportedly agreed to a temporary ceasefire. It's a step that could also pave the way for a peace agreement with the U.S. after months of negotiations. The scientist helped create the world's first genetically edited babies. He is going to jail. Mm. His name is Ho Jian Kui of China. He is going to be in prison for three years for carrying out what the Chinese government says were illegal medical practices. So last November, he alarmed scientists around the globe saying that he successfully altered the genetic code of two twin baby girls. Critics questioned his ethics and feared it could open the door to designer babies. And the scientists defended his work to the Associated Press. And we start with a developing story out of Iraq, where we're seeing angry crowds attack the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. Today's violence growing more intense after hundreds of pro-Iranian protesters march through what's normally a restricted part of the Iraqi capital. Some could be seen setting fires to blast walls surrounding the compound, smashing embassy windows, and trying to break down doors. 
And the backlash you're seeing set off by Sunday's U.S. airstrikes against an Iranian-backed militia the U.S. blames for killing an American contractor last week. The sudden escalation between the U.S. and that group now fueling calls for American forces to leave the country. Meanwhile, President Trump is tweeting about the violence in Baghdad, saying in part, quote, Iran is orchestrating an attack on the U.S. embassy in Iraq. They will be held fully responsible.